Hello friends. Today I thought I'd introduce you to my gardener, Joshua. He's amazing. And um, he is the one who put in the drip irrigation system. So I want him to tell you a little bit about that. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the filter too, because that's very important. And my other system did not have that. And so I was literally um, choking out the water and it wasn't really efficiently um, watering my garden. So let me introduce you to Joshua. So this is Joshua. Hello. <laughs> He's our gardener and we're just so happy. But um, tell us a little bit why about the irrigation system. So with all of our gardens, you know, we want to make sure we have an irrigation system. We can't be out in the garden 24 seven watering, you know, six in the morning. So that's the benefit of having an automatic irrigation system. Uh, you have two types, two, two of the more popular types would be a drip irrigation and pop-up sprinklers. Mm -hmm. uh, my recommendation with pop-up sprinklers, they should only go with lawn or taller fescues, not really in your shrubs, uh, roses, plants. Uh, when it comes to that, I highly recommend drip tubing. Reason for that, uh, drip tubing allows you to water the gardens uh, much even, evenly and efficiently compared to pop-up sprinklers. Uh, one thing with pop-up sprinklers is, you know, they go about four inches high and they have nozzles that are set at a certain uh, gallons per minute. However, we have mother nature, wind, we cannot control wind. And so we're always going to have overspray. You know, those angles aren't going to be, it might say it's 90 degrees, but due to many factors, you know, pressure, X, Y, and Z, it's not going to be accurate and it eliminates, uh, the efficiency aspect compared to a drip tubing. You know, drip tubing is installed uh, overground. Normally, when it comes to a drip tubing, people add about two inches of mulch, just for extra precaution, just to preserve the tubing. Uh-huh. Uh, just because of UV rays, but- I'm not uh, gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the drip tubing usually comes from the manufacturer. It's, you know, uh, UV, UV ray protected. And so uh, the actual tubing itself- Uh-huh. This is an example of a tubing. There's so many names. Uh, people know them by Netafim, uh, Drip Tubing. There's so many companies. Uh, but as you can see, each 12 inches, it has a emitter. And what that meter does, it leaks very, very little water and it allows the garden to get saturated evenly. So if this is placed over 100 feet linear feet, that means every 12, every foot, it's gonna have an emitter to water everything uh, evenly and proportionally versus pop-ups these old guys you know they won't do that and how long do you think uh, you know the drip irrigation should be you know you how, how long should you use it each day so in regards to the drip uh, system it all depends the main factor is your pressure of your house you know as long as it's about 60 psi that's good pressure uh, but you want to make sure the valve manifold has a pressure regulator and a filter uh, just because if you don't uh, it's potentially uh, can damage the tubing just because it's rated at a certain pre pressure and depending also how much linear foot uh, the garden is. Uh, but it's... Well, let's take a look at the filter because I think that's gonna be really important to making sure that the system works. Yes. Okay, so here we are at, I don't know, what is this called, Joshua? So typically, uh, people refer to this as your valve manifolds. Okay. Uh, these are brass manifolds, mm -hmm. three quarter inch. And so what this does, it supplies water to the irrigation system. On one end, you have the output, which is where it's connected to the water line from the house. This piping here is the water line. Mm -hmm. And then you have, sorry, this is the input. Mm -hmm. and this is the output. The output is the side where it sends water to the garden. Okay. So the output is never under pressure unless the valve is on. However, the output is always under pressure and so this pipe right now, if we crack it, it will, you know, burst water. Ah. And so what the valve does is uh, once you open the valve via solenoid, which is through how the uh, sprinkler timer turns it on, mm -hmm. uh, it releases all that pressure to the output side. Okay. And one good thing here, this is a perfect example of what you should have at your home. If you look at the water line, on um, this device here, this is a pressure regulator. So this is coming from the water line from the house, the, the main source. Uh -huh. And so what this does, it allows you to ha uh, regulate the pressure. Uh, for instance, if you have pressure over 70 PSI or 80 PSI, 
you know, some properties do. This allows you to regulate that pressure to about 60 PSI or even 50, depending on what uh, you need for your application. Okay. So now, uh, what about the filter down here? How does that work? So on the output side of the valve, uh, you should always install a filter slash an extra pressure regulator. And so what happens is... I'm excited to see what's in here. What happens is when that uh, uh, valve turns on and the diaphragm lifts, all that water that gushes through the drip system goes through this filter first. Okay. And so this screen here is going to catch any residue, obviously, because we live in California, the water is not the cleanest. We always have some settlement. You know, we always are going to have some kind of salt. And so you don't want this to go into the actual drip tubing. Right, because even those little particles could... Um obstruct the holes in the drip tubing. Now, previously my system didn't have a filter and so it was in for, I don't know, six years, probably completely clogged, who knew? But if you um, switch this out every three or four months, you should have a pretty clean system, right? Correct. And what some landscapers tend to ignore, uh, they install a inline pressure regulator, but it's not a screen filter. And so this guy, this product is from Rainbird. So this is a two-in-one. This is a water screen filter and a pressure regulator for the output side. Great, okay. Well, Joshua, this has been an education and I know that my viewers will really enjoy it. And we really thank you for all of your hard work. <laughs> I'm gonna put Joshua's information in the blog just in case you're interested. <laughs>